Welcome to WebDM. I'm Jonathan Pruitt. And as always, I'm with the intrepid Jim Davis. Today we're going to pick his brain, find out what it takes to be a DM. And today we're going to talk about different play styles. Let's get going. There's some different gaming styles yeah, yeah. For, for players. Mm -hmm. So let's just run through those. Okay. Um, power gamers. Power games keep you on your toes. Yeah. Uh, as a DM, you've got to account for them. They're there. You try not to be a power gamer and a DM. Uh, that can be a little rough for the yeah, players since they're unfair. not ready for it. It's yeah. a little unfair. But having power gamer players, um, it's not it's, it's not that big a deal. You know, particularly if you're opening up front and saying like, hey, there's just some things you're not going to do, or if you come up with a power combo, just run it by me first. Right. You know, a lot of this can be handled before the game even starts, where you can say things like, we're not using this book, we're not using that book, we're not doing this, and you set firm guidelines for what characters should be and what resources you can use to make characters. And if something comes up in game, you just, at a, at a break, just feel like, hey, whatever it is you're doing right now, it's either not working or let's, or better yet, whatever power gaming trick that you want to use, is there a way that that power gamer can use it, exploit those that rule loophole, have that fun that they want to have, and have it not ruin the game? Right. Is there a way for the power gamer to get out of the game what they want? More often than not, they just want to hit things and hit them hard and hit them well, and that's not a problem. The real difficulty with a power gamer is if you only have one, and it can be difficult to challenge the power gamer while making sure that everyone else has, has some kind of fun. And either they're not left on the sidelines because they right. can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big bad, right? or everybody else is having a great combat and the power gamer is over there just one shot and guys left and right yeah and is kind of bored so would you rather have a power gamer or a rules rules lawyer hmm. i don't know rules lawyers are nice because then i don't have to read the rules all you know and that contradicts what i said earlier that like you should kind of know the rules but it's really nice to have a rules lawyer at the table because it's like hey man i don't remember that rule do you know what it is off the top of your head yeah. And then their just encyclopedic knowledge of the rules goes, mm -hmm. you know, rules lawyers and power gamers are, are close cousins. Yeah. They can be, uh, they're not all, they're not one and the same. Mm -hmm. um, mostly with the rules lawyer, it's a firm hand. It's just saying like, hey, this is what I'm going to allow. This is what I'm not. And the reason, and give reasons. Here's why I don't want this. Mm -hmm. Here's why this particular rules lo loophole doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. If it ruins the game, if it if it's causing problems for someone else, find out why they want to use it. What about the exploit uh, of the rules do they want to use? Maybe they're doing it because they want something. Yeah. Or maybe they're doing it because they find it's fun to manipulate the rules a little bit. Yeah. Maybe I don't even realize they're doing it. Yeah, I consider myself kind of a hybrid power gamer rules lawyer with delusions of martyrdom. Sure, yeah. I, can, I think that kind of encapsulates the way I play because I've had multiple epic character deaths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... The elf that jumped down the chimney into the lava chute. Well, that wasn't epic. That was just stupid. I had just finished reading about Brunor doing that, and I was like, "Oh, it's probably just a. It's probably just a." Yeah. Anyway, it was a lava chute. It wasn't. A, it wasn't an oven. I couldn't get out. I died. But that's a good. That's a good story because that yeah. illustrates the the importance of having accurate descriptions as a DM. Yeah. So that when the player says, "I'm going to jump in that lava chute," you're, they're like. The, the, the appropriate response, however long ago that was, we played that game, would have been, you know that that's a shoot down into glowing lava, not a chimney going up with right. a fire in it. See, that's what I was thinking. Again, yep. I had just read about Brunor doing that, and I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. Right. Yep. Yeah, it was the perfect opportunity to die. Yeah. But then there's my character, Rockard, who took out the first Draco Lich. You know, yeah. I could have tried to escape. I decided to roll. I hit him. He died. We won. It was awesome. Go. RP Jesus is uh, is is a great is a great thing. It's how I, it's how I see myself a lot of times. You like having a character sometimes that is the martyr that does save the day mm -hmm. that likes doing that versus you always need to be that. You well, always have to be the special guy. Yeah, I, you see, don't cross that. I line. don't cross that line. I just I think it's just the way I view role playing, which is I don't necessarily have to make it to twentieth level mm -hmm. if my characters. I'm having fun with my character, and we get to a point where we're fighting a big bad, and I see a point where we can either withdraw, or maybe if I can go forward, my character might die. There are times, it's, it's one of those things where you have to look at it and go, well, this is a game, and that would be epic, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. Johan yeah. the Prudent. Yeah. That character it was a Warhammer game, but still, ran up on a wizard, cut his wand in half. <laughs> Everybody started going crazy. I started mm -hmm. going Akira, and I just tackled the guy out the window. There you go. Screw it. Quality you know, I was like, well, I'm going to die anyway. 
Might as well I can kill this you. wizard while I do it. Why not? Yeah. As, jump, as, you know, as the fleshy jump. tumors erupt from your character's body. I guess I'll be back. You'll be back. With a new character. Absolutely. And I think, you know, with the, with the player that wants to play the martyr and that wants to always play the hero, it's important not to shut them down and say, no, never, yeah. is to say, yes, sometimes. Right. Not all, you know, you and everyone else. Yeah. And to let them have the moments where they get to shine and to let them have the moments where they want where they can be the martyr and make the sacrifice, but not have it overpower everybody else's fun. Because there are there are some that will try to write that into their backstory. Like, they will. Right at the beginning, like, I'm Luke Skywalker. I want a lightsaber. I want to be the one that brings balance to the force. Yeah. And the appropriate thing to do in those cases is to sit down with that player and go, why is that really important to you, and how can we make this work with four to five other people? Yeah. You know, because you know. Luke Skywalker had friends, he had buddies, yeah. you know, he had people helping him. Whether they do it on purpose or not, whether it's an accident, whatever, it ends up happening that they sometimes steal the spotlight. There's a lot of people who view game balance and character balance and all this other kind of stuff as, as really important. I've always seen it more as who gets spotlight time. Has so-and-so had a chance for their character to shine today? Right. Have they had a chance to get to do something cool that they like doing? It doesn't always happen, but hopefully over an entire campaign, everybody's character has had enough things to do yeah. and had enough cool moments that they look back on it as a whole and go, yeah, that was really fun. That's why it's important whenever you're making characters and particularly with players you've never played with before, mm -hmm. to kind of say like, well, you know, what do you guys like playing? Yeah. What characters do you like playing? Why do you like role playing? So while you're doing that group character creation as the DM, just chatting with the players, like what is it about, the, about it that they like? Because they might want to play that monster slayer. Yeah. They might want to play that fighter that goes toe to toe with the Draco Lich and, and takes them on. That might be what they're after. Or maybe they're, you know, like some of our other friends that play, maybe they just want to be the rogue. Maybe they, they want to just go and they want to sneak around. They want to open locks fun time. Yeah. and get past the guards, you know? Yeah. And then there's the last, probably the most dangerous group, which is the DM's girlfriend slash boyfriend. Yes. Um, yeah. Favoritism. Favoritism. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to think that I've never indulged in anything like that, but that'd be a no. lie. There have been times where it's been like, I like that character more than any other character at the table. Yeah. And I try not to be a dick about it. Yeah. But I have been a player at tables where there is clearly someone at the gaming table that is the favorite. They get the choicest loot. They get the best stuff. They get the most favorite rulings. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. Yeah. It, it's going to upset everyone. It's gonna, if you have someone who will only play because you're, they're your favorite as the DM, you have a problem that's different than a gaming problem. Don't bring that weird thing to the gaming table. Take care of it elsewhere. Yeah. If if the person, you know, if you've got a significant other that they just want to spend time with you or they're not really interested in the game but they but it's at their house and they just want to be there, that's perfectly fine. But I think being up front and saying, "Oh, hey, so and so, she's going to play or he's going to sit in and you know, they're not really into it, but it's fine." You know, whatever it is to help them, you know, help that the significant other who may or may not be an RP -er, but wants to be included, whatever it takes to help them feel included that doesn't upset everyone else, I mm -hmm. think is all right. Well, you know, yeah. we're not trying to achieve world peace here, Jim Davis. No, we're not, but we could prove it. <laughs> we, we could. could. With communication. <laughs> With a high enough diplomacy check. Right, half elf. That's why half elves matter. <laughs> That's why half elves matter, Pruitt. <laughs> There's not gonna be any world peace without half elves in the world. We're doomed. We are doomed. Oh my god. Thanks again for watching WebDM. We're going to have new ones every Wednesday. Tell your friends. Come back next week.